this was a hard year. Yeah, I probably don't have to tell you that. Astrologers knew this and they warned us, but who had the guts to call a pandemic? <laughs> so first of all, if you survived, count 2020 as a win. But now that the year is winding down, it is time to look back and see what we can learn from 2020. Because even if you experienced setbacks due to the once in a lifetime pandemic, or you spent most of the year depressed, unable to take any real action because you were dealing with mental health stuff brought on by this craziness, there's still a lot to learn from 2020. So many people's worlds crumbled to the ground, but not everyone. And if you were a part of the, this is an opportunity boat, then 2020 was probably a good year for you. I know it was for me. <laughs> I've been expecting fucking collapse since 2012, hence becoming self-employed before it was cool versus getting a cushy job with benefits. And I have seen so many businesses thrive this year. And a key part of it was not falling victim to external affairs, to the news, to other people's stories, to other people settling. Anyways, before we dive in, I do need to mention that the year isn't over. For those that are listening in real time, Merry Christmas. <laughs> this is coming out on December 25th of 2020. You can still hit your 2020 goals. You have a few days. And it is a great practice to look at what is going on in your head if you're already writing off 2020 as over when you still have a week left. <laughs> Just had to throw that in there in case you needed to hear it. I know not everyone does. Some people need to take rest right now and deserve rest. And I mean, everyone deserves rest. Some people, that's what they really need, but some people are just making excuses. So I had to mention it. So how should you be evaluating and reviewing your year? Let's start with why. Reviewing and evaluating is a much overlooked key to success. It's one of the waning phase actions of the moon cycle and our business cycles, not as sexy as setting goals, <laughs> which is why so many business owners overlook evaluating and reviewing. It is so much easier to focus on big sparkly future plans than to analyze something that is already over with. But this one action can quantum leap your success, success path. Instead of driving forward without learning our lessons, we should be taking stock from what's already happened and learning so we can be wiser for all of our experiences. So how do we look back at our goals? First, take out the notebook where you originally wrote down all of your goals for 2020 or all the goals you had as the year evolved. Hopefully you wrote all of that down somewhere because writing them down is a magical practice in and of themselves, in and of it, itself. But this can even be your vision board if you do that. It can be a Pinterest board where you pin your ideal future or a file on your computer where you took notes on what you want or a note on your phone. Whatever it is, look it over. And then begin to lump your goals into categories. For example, maybe your goal was buying your dream car or making seven figures. Those are financial goals. Or Maybe you had wanted to be featured in Forbes or reach 10,000 new clients. Those are career goals. Maybe you wanted a baby or a new house. Those are your family goals. And on and on. I like to start with these seven categories. I mean, seven is a wonderfully magical number. Work, money, love, family, spirituality, fun, and health. So I'll repeat that. Work, money, love, family, spirituality, fun, and health. And again, these are in the show notes, so um, you don't have to write anything down. And we're going to be going through a bunch of uh, prompts for you to review and use. Also, those will be in the show notes. So you can either follow along with this audio or video if you're watching on YouTube and pause when I get to certain sections and just fill, the, fill out the section in your journal, or you can look on thedirtyalchemy.com in our podcast section where everything will be written out or just in the show notes, wherever you're reading this or listening to this, excuse me. But your categories can be whatever you want them to be, whatever matters to you. I do find that people tend to focus heavily on one to three areas and set goals in those areas and neglect the others. So 
I tend to set money to work goals and then no other goals. <laughs> so that's like where I naturally, what I naturally do. So actually having a holistic seven, these seven different categories that cover all of your life or good chunks of your life, it, it makes it so that you can focus on more than just what you naturally gravitate towards the things that you're more likely to neglect. So now let's look at the categories one by one do this. <laughs> if you had actual measurable goals, and I hope you did, because in my experience, the best way to get what you want is to be super clear on it and concrete enough to have actual numbers associated with it. And um, if you so if you had measurable goals, what numbers did you hit? And why do you think you hit or surpassed the goals you did? Why do you think you didn't hit or totally forgot about ones you didn't hit? Did your priorities change or did your focus? Um, how can you prevent that going forward? Did certain goals not matter to you? Did you not have enough accountability? Did you just not prioritize it? Or maybe you were afraid. So if you're afraid, what were you afraid of? And before I continue, one thing I want to add in here is if you're a, a person who likes to study human design or find that interesting, there is an actual part of your chart that indicates whether it's better for you to do specific goals, like hyper specific. I want a house with two bedrooms in this neighborhood. I want that house <laughs> versus a non-specific. So that would be a, um, um, I want to be in a house that makes me feel spacious and taken care of and nurtured or it's more, more vague bits of it. And so it could be interesting for you to learn that. I think you can just Google. It's like if you, you, you put out your human design chart, there's little arrows by your head in the, the body graph. Um, and depending on certain, which way the arrows are, one of the four arrows is um, pointing will indicate whether you are a specific or non-specific manifester. And I know that manifester is an actual energy type, but I mean, like in terms of manifesting and goal setting, whether you are specific and non-specific, I find it really interesting. So it could be a fun Google search for you. I think you can probably just Google, because I don't know it off the top of my head, <laughs> just Google, um, and how to find out if I am a specific or non-specific, um, how do I find out if I'm just specific or non-specific in human design? That should tell you how to do that. So interesting to learn about ourselves, right? <sighs> so I have had clients who set their goals so high that it made them freeze. They hadn't done the integration work needed to welcome that huge influx of clients and cash into their life. So instead of hustling toward that major goal, they get overwhelmed and don't make any progress on it. If that was you, maybe it's time to think about what mindset work you need to do to allow yourself to hit your goals. Procrastinating can often mean I have shadow work I need to do. Usually I don't even consciously know what it is until I sit down and meditate on it and journal on it. But unconsciously something is happening where part of me doesn't want to make progress on the thing, whatever it is. So that means really having to sit down and get clear on why I'm really resistant, maybe journaling out fears or um, parts of myself that feels neglected. Because if I don't, the resistance is going to keep coming up and I'm never going to make progress. On the other side of it, Maybe you're just, another reason for procrastination is you're just straight up overcommitted. You didn't give yourself the rest and spaciousness you needed in your schedule to actually get things done. So if that is a pattern for you, you may want to think, you may want to think about why you don't think you deserve rest or you deserve to take time off, or what are you avoiding through working in your life and being overcommitted and being overworked what is that allowing you to numb out on? So if you think, if you do find yourself procrastinating or making excuses, ask yourself, why are you resisting making your goal a reality? What are you afraid will happen if you don't hit your goals? 
failure is terrifying, <laughs> especially if part of you already believes you don't deserve it. If you already have to fight the messages from your brain and maybe the world, maybe society saying that you can never amount to anything, you can never make a business that supports you or one that breaks past a certain dollar amount in annual revenue or monthly revenue. You can never be a successful entrepreneur where it's significantly harder and it'll take you much more time. So many of us have this voice in your, our heads saying not to get too comfortable that my business success is temporary and it can come crumbling down any second. This is when it's less about business strategy and more about your own brain. It's about integrating your desires so that everything is aligned. Because if you don't, that literal, little fear voice gets louder and louder until it ends up running the show. Or what terrible or annoying things would happen if you did hit the goal that your brain is being a genius by avoiding. Seriously, sometimes our brains hold us back because they're lazy. <laughs> they don't like change because change means there, there are new things to learn. And obviously with that comes new opportunities to fail. And that's like danger, danger, danger. Don't do that. <laughs> Maybe you think that too many clients would overwhelm you or you don't want to respond to a bunch of dumb questions that people will email in if you hit a certain audience size. Maybe you're afraid you'd be irresponsible or no longer feel connected to your friends or family. There's a lot of things that can be going on with that. So these are just some questions to get you thinking about what really happened. Because oftentimes we look at our goals and not reaching them and we say something along the lines of, well, I could have never done that anyways, or I didn't even really want that. When the truth is you could do it and you do want it, but there's a lot more going on under the surface. Eking out the real story and not just rehashing the most familiar narrative to you is going to help you way more than anything else you can do to get to the heart of what your motivations were in 2020. So if you can do that for all the different, all the seven categories or multiple categories of your choice, um, go ahead and do that. And then another question is, how do you, do you want to feel in 2020? Maybe you never got to that feeling because you didn't hit your goals or you did hit your goals, but there was something missing for you. Like maybe you thought you still couldn't, could have done better, or you realized that once you got to the de destination that it wasn't worth giving up time with your family to get there. And I mean, this is really common with people who set very specific financial goals and then they hit them and they realize that it didn't actually get them with what they wanted, which was to feel a certain way. <laughs> so you can get really granular with this by printing out bank statements and credit card statements and going line by line month by month and it actually is a really great practice if you've never done that before because you can see where your money is actually flowing and um, if there are expenses that don't make sense for you and your business or you and your personal life if you're doing that in your personal life as well. Um, but the truth is numbers don't lie. <laughs> Knowing your monthly finances can have a huge impact on the way you think about your goals and it can also help you get super clear on your goals for the year ahead. So finally, celebrate. So many of us are hard on ourselves, but it's really the consistent celebration that builds the neural pathway that it's fun and rewarding to do hard things. So no matter what goals you hit or didn't hit or didn't even realize you should be working towards, even if your priorities have changed, celebrate where you were and where you are now and celebrate the journey that brought you here. And yes, celebrate the failures. What did you learn? What won't you do again? What do you have clarity on? Write down all the lessons you've learned to remind yourself that even the failures were hugely important in your journey. And I mean, just in and of itself, if you can go and sit down and write 10, 20, 50 things you're proud of from 2020, like sit down and actually do that process and you'll be blown away at how much you actually did and how there was so much to be proud of this year. 
getting out of bed. <laughs> line item number one, <laughs> you made it through 2020. Line item number two. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so you can do this on a yearly basis, but I also recommend going month to month because we tend to only remember the most recent things that have happened in our lives. So like if you think of, okay, what happened in December of 2020, that you're going to think of a gazillion things because we're in it right now or whatever month you're in while you're listening to this. But if you're like, hmm, what happened in June 2020? It's going to be harder for you to like look back and be like, okay, I mean, like we did some of this and that. Maybe I have to look at my copy calendar to remember what was actually going on in my life. So great practice to do on a month to month basis. I mean, celebration really should be a day to day thing for all of us. Cause it, again, we're building the neural pathways in order to reinforce that what we're doing gives us positive results in our lives. So, um, anyways, ask yourself every month or right now at the end of the year, do this, go through the months. What were the best things that happened in January, in February, in March, etc.? What were the worst things that happened? Who were the best people in my life on my team, if you have a team? And then was there anyone who needs to be booted from your life? People who weighed you down and kept you small. And finally, 2021 was your year of what? Go ahead and settle on a word. Maybe it was your year of growth, your year of expansion, your year of trial by fire. You can actually create an epic hero saga for 2020. Rewrite it in your best possible light. Write a story that tells you how 2020 and everything that happened in it totally sets you up for utter success in 2021. How it was a necessary step on the road a uh, road to your next level and a hugely important part of hitting your next goal and building your dream business and life. Okay, this is, I mean, this is the key exercise from this entire podcast or video if you're watching YouTube, okay? Then decide that this interpretation this epic hero saga for 2020, your hero saga, heroine saga, that is the truth. So this is obviously a huge project that I'm assigning you. I mean, these questions are major. You can't figure all of this out in five minutes, which is why so many people just never do it. And with rewriting your hero saga, rewriting 2020, or just writing it down, deciding what it, what you're going to make 2020 be for you, what your story you're going to tell and letting go of whatever little things you're holding on to that could be more of the, oh, 2020 was, I mean, it, I, you could write 2020 was a year I never got to see my friends and we were quarantined and I lost my job or I um, lost clients when you could tell the exact same thing full of very true things, but highlighting the truth and highlighting that it's setting you up for 2021. And that is a significantly more powering, empowering story so that you're going to 2021 on your highest note. Cause 2020, 2020 can be a high note for you. So, so many people never look at their successes or failures. They just stay laser focused ahead. And then year after year, without even realizing it, they make the same mistakes over and over and over again. So is it worth it to sit with these questions if it means you can be saving yourself years of trial and error? I think it is. So in case you missed it, I am hosting a five-day business alchemy experience from December 28th to January 1st to help you plan your business goals for 2021. So in this episode today, we went through 2020 and reviewed, hopefully you paused it while you're listening to it, or you're going back with the show notes later to really answer these fully, 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 fully answer these. Cause there's so much, so much you can learn from your experience of 2020. And then next week, so December 28th through January 1st, that is just next week, we're going to be doing this five-day event where every day a new podcast episode is coming out. And um, we're going to actually be planning 2021 with ritual, with um, really 
visualized experience with bringing on Donna Woodwell, who is a master astrologer, to tell us about the astrology of 2021 and how really the intention is making 2021 your best year yet. And um, we're doing everything from goal setting strategies to rituals, even um, bring on Donna, as I said, and you can just head on over to thedirtyalchemy.com slash 2021 and set up, uh, sign up for free right now. Um, and of course, once you get in and you sign up, there's an opportunity for you to win a free web page review from me and my expert marketing team, um, where we will look over your sales page or your landing page or your home page and um, give you our opinion on what you should change and how you can make it better so that it is better serving you and your business goals. So again, that is thedirtyalchemy.com slash 2021 to sign up right now. It is completely free and it'll, it'll just be spending, um, a, having a five day experience together and um, having everything you need to really make it your best year yet and a very magical year full of impact fulfillment and of course, cold hard cash. So I will see you there. You have a great week and I will see you on Monday. <laughs>